Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to the Zion's World Broadcast with Evangelist F. Baxter. Welcome once and welcome twice. Welcome in the powerful, awesome, precious name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what you've been through, but I want to let you know that God is able to fix it. Whatever circumstances that is not in your favor, whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, the Lord rests in my mind to share with you, God is able to fix it. Sometime in our life, many of us can testify we have experienced some setbacks, some tricks and traps from the devil's plot. But I want to tell somebody that God can fix it. All of us have gone through circumstances that was not in our favor. I have a dear friend who lost his father. And... Um, you know, as I talked to him, I could feel the pain. Especially when you lost someone near and dear to you that, uh, that was not sick and the person was fit and okay and an accident or something unexpected happened. It is very sad. Ladies and gentlemen, as I make this message, I'm thinking about the earthquake in Turkey. How much people lost family member. And I thought about tragedy and disaster my brothers and sisters and the thought came to me in a tragedy in, in when you have a disaster and you lost your house it seemed like you'd have sell everything to get back your loved one if you lost a son a daughter husband wife a family member or a dear friend you would have paid everything that you have to get back a loved one that is dear and near to you. And it came to my mind that sometimes we are going through things and we may think, you know, it's so hard in me. But sometimes our circumstances is not as bad as some other people. Because I talk about Turkey, some people lost almost everybody in their family. And if they have to pay everything that they have to get back a loved one, I know they would have done that. Because if a car or a house is damaged, you can get back that. But when you lose somebody, when somebody dies, nothing can bring back that person. Oh Lord, it just came to my thought. That's not what I'm going to talk about, but it just came to my thought. I have a co-worker who lost his dad. And um, in this message, I just want to say to Pete, I, I appreciate you, my brother, and I really love you as a, a, a man that loves your family and care for your family. And, it, I've, you know, it's hard to say you know how the person feel, but I just want to say I pray that God will give you the strength in these days to deal with the circumstances that you did not foresee or plan for. All of us have circumstances that make us sad sometimes. And uh, many people have lost loved one. And I just want to say, there's coming a day, one day, when death shall die in the book of Revelation 20. Revelation 20 from verse 14 to the end. Death and hell will be cast in the lake of fire. And um, we never get used to death no matter what never get used to that but one day death and hell according to the bible in revelation 20 verse 14 to the end will be cast into the lake of fire but this little message i want to speak to you about will be very short so let me get into the word let me get into the word real quick this topic in title we need light we need light we need light that's the topic Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Zion's Wild Broadcast with Evangelist. Back to sharing the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, in many of my messages, you will not necessarily see me, you will hear me. But in many of the messages also, you will see me sharing the word of God. 
Sometime, my brothers and sisters, the purpose of the Zion's World Broadcast is not for Mr. Baxter to be known, but for the Word of God to be proclaimed. For the Word of God to be broadcast, the Word of God, I pray that the Word of God will bring conviction that, will bring conviction that leads to conversion. Therefore, as I share this message with you, I want to pray to ask God to give me words to say and true these modern technology be a blessing to somebody because in the book of daniel chapter 12 verse 4 the bible said in the last days knowledge shall increase and so we have different platforms that the word of god can be shared and and i pray that through these uh social media that the word of god will be a blessing to somebody the word of god will be a life-saving changing hope and message to somebody as it has been to me we need light we need light let us pray dear god thank you for the word thank you for the bible thank you for life thank you for waking us up this morning thank you lord god that you get, did not give us what we deserve we deserve to die but you give us a second chance thank you dear god bless this woman and bless this man boy or girl i evangelist said baxter arrest me with your holy spirit and use me for the saving of your people Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In this text, uh, I, I normally and I like to use Bible text because I want to base what I'm saying on the Word of God. So this Bible text is coming from the book of Psalms 119. Psalms 119, the Bible said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, verse 105. And Psalms 119, verse 133 say, Order my steps in thy word. The topic, we need light. Why do we need light? Ladies and gentlemen, we need light because I don't know if you ever walk in a dark room. Have you ever dealt with real darkness have you ever dealt with darkness that is so dark you you can't even see it's like a it's so dark and darkness seem seem like it's thick and so we need light when you light some light a lamp and bring it into a dark room you notice how quick the light the darkness disappear bright light will make darkness disappear in a twinkle of an eye we need light, and the Bible also said in the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we need light because it's getting dark. We need light because signs of the times are everywhere, that the clouds are gathering, and darkness are stepping, is coming in. Uh, many people are living, many of us are living as if there is no God. And I, Baxter from the Zion's World Broadcast, just want to remind somebody that God is still in control. In spite of what's going on, in spite of the tornadoes, in spite of the earthquakes, in spite of the natural disaster, in spite of immorality that is getting worse each day, in spite of all these things, God is still in charge. He's watching. Ladies and gentlemen, why we need light? Jesus said he's the light of the world. And he said men love darkness more than light. And it's a fact that we like to do the wrong things more than the right things. And why we need light? Because the Bible text said in Psalms 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, brothers and sisters, I have experienced darkness when there was no electricity. Darkness that was so thick that I could not see. I, I was walking on the road one time and I heard a person coming. I heard the footsteps. It was so dark, my brothers and sisters all over the world, because why it was so dark? Because I just came out, I just came out of the light. I just came out of the light. I just came out of the light, brothers and sisters. So when you come, I was coming from church and I turned off the light in the church and I was alone walking home in the dark. I heard the footstep coming. It was so dark, I couldn't see the person. Oh Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, notice what I said. 
When I leave church and turn off the light, the place gets so dark. Many people can testify they once was in the light. They were in the light. They were walking in the light, in the beautiful light of God. They were in church. They, was a, they, they were the light. They, 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 were, they were standing up for God. They were witnesses for God. They were a light in their family. They, was a, they were a light in their community. And something happened. I don't know what happened. Something happened. And somebody left the light. Somebody leave the church. And you know when you leave the church of God, you leave the light, you're gone in the dark. Now, that night when I left the church, walking out, and I got down the road and it was so dark, I couldn't see where to turn. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. If you once was a follower of Christ and you stopped serving God and you leave Jesus the light, your part will be dark. And ladies and gentlemen, we will not make it to the promised land if we keep walking in the dark. Sometimes it's so dark, we cannot see where to turn. Somebody can testify that I'm speaking the truth. Sometimes it gets so dark that we, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, we find ourselves in a dark place. We find ourselves in a lonely place. We find ourselves in a sad place. We find ourselves living without hope when you left the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus, he left the splendor of heaven. Knowing his destiny, he came to die and dark Calvary. He came to set men free. And the Bible said, who the son set free is free indeed. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the Savior of the world, the hope for mankind. Notice if you are following Christ and you leave, things get dark. I want to tell somebody when a storm, in, when a, when a storm is coming, it gets dark. When a storm is coming, notice it gets very dark. Ladies and gentlemen, and when the rain starts to fall and everything starts to come up on you one time, you don't even know what to do. You are so confused. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to make it in this wicked world, we need the light. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Jesus came to be the hope for mankind. My brothers and sisters, the Bible said in St. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave, his, gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I tell you something. The Bible never lied. Jesus promised life eternal. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But please make note that the Bible said the devil also believe and tremble. What, what are you saying, Baxter? Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus promised to give us life. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Now, if you believe him, you're going to serve him. If you love him, you're going to serve him. If you love him, you're going to obey him. So just because we know the name Jesus, just because we call the name Jesus, don't mean we are serving him. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 25, 10 virgins was going to a banquet and the Bible said five were wise and five were foolish. Ladies and gentlemen, they all look like Christians. They all look like servants of God. They all have a mindset at the time that they are going to the banquet. But in the book of Matthew chapter 25, five got in and five get locked out. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, even though the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, we must obey the word of God. 
How is it you want to go to God's place and you want to live your own way? How is it you want to go to God's place and you don't want to obey his word? Psalms 119 verse 105 said, I word is a lamp unto my feet. Back in the days before electricity, a lamp was used to guide. A lamp was used to show you where to turn. A lamp was used to show you so you wouldn't stumble over something. A lamp was used to give light so you could turn and go the right way. Without the light, you can't see where to turn. Without the light, you will go in a path that seems right, but will lead to death. Light come to show us the way. And Jesus came as the light of the world to show us the way. And if you and I truly want this everlasting life, if we truly believe in the word of God and want to be saved, we must obey the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the light of the world. He come to give us hope. He come that life don't have to be an endless pain. He come that mankind can have hope. That in the end, life don't have to be an endless pain. Jesus come that life can be a joyful end with eternal life. Listen to the text. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is saying there is a way that is created there is a way that is available that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Because of sin, we get hold and we die. Because of sin, no matter how good you live, if you live long enough, one day we're going to get old and die. But Jesus, God's son, make a way that you can have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, read Revelation chapter 20 from verse 5. Read Revelation chapter 10, verse 5. Revelation chapter 20. I want to let you know that there is more to life than what you see. Jesus, the Son of God, said in St. John's chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You see earthquakes. You hear of bad weather. You hear, you heard of famine and things to come. Because I want to tell somebody in this message... There are going to be a lot of natural disaster. Why, why do I say that? When any people, our person, our nations turn from God. Throughout the Bible, look in the Bible. When people turn from God. When people forget about God. When people live as, there, as if there is no God. Oh Lord. You're going to experience the judgment of God. Nineveh was living as if there was no God and God was getting ready to destroy Nineveh and he sent preacher Jonah down there to preach and he preached a short sermon. In 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. And the Bible says from the king down, they fast and pray and the king said, let us turn from our evil way. The Bible said they turn from their evil way and God did not do what he said he would have done. Nineveh was a wicked place and God gave them a second chance. As an individual, if we are doing the wrong things, that God is willing to give us a second chance. A thief on the cross was a thief indeed, but he was a thief in need. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus stopped dying and gave the thief a second chance. We need the light. The thief got hope because of the light, Jesus Christ. Jesus was on the center cross. He was the light of the world. They treat him as the worst sinner, but no, he was the light. He was the hope of mankind. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ died on the cross. And they put him in a grave, but a grave couldn't hold him. They put him in a grave, but a grave could not control him. No, sir. Because the Bible said, on the third day he rose with power. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, give us hope. We need light. 
and we need hope. And the hope that I give to you, my brothers and sisters, is the hope of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the name of Jesus, there is deliverance. In the name of Jesus, there is salvation. And in the name of Jesus, according to St. John chapter 3, verse 16, you and I can have everlasting life. So in spite of what's not in your favor, let's come out of the dark, come to the light, for Jesus is the light of the world. Light lead, light will lead and guide us in the right path. Without light, we can't see where to turn. And the Bible said, there's a way that seems right unto a man that can lead to death. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is the guide. The Bible is the map. In the Bible, you will see how the word of God leads you. The word of God, ladies and gentlemen, will guide you. The Bible is like a map that will lead you to your final destination in the bible you will find the information that will get you to your final destination jesus said in this word i think he said you can find eternal life but it's your choice just because you get a gift if you don't open the gift it be of no benefit but if you open the gift and check the contents in the gift and make use of it then it will be of benefit for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave, he sent his son. But the question is, if we don't believe his son, if we don't accept his son, if we don't obey the word of God, if we don't do the will of God, just because you heard the name Jesus, don't mean we will have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, we need light in these days, in these trying days. I want to tell somebody, remember the best friend to have is Jesus. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never forget you. As I close on this message, I want to tell you a few things about Jesus, the light of the world. Somebody says he's the lily of the valley. He's greater than and he's brighter and better than any star. star. Jesus is not just the lily of the valley. But he's the fairest of 10,000. Jesus is the way maker. Jesus is a life saver. Jesus has the power to walk on water and then turn water into wine. Jesus has power to let the lame walk, the dumb talk, the blind see. <laughs> Jesus can set you free, my sister. Jesus can set you free, my brothers. Oh, boys and girls Jesus love you this I know for the Bible tell us so the Bible says suffer the children to come unto me ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we need the light and for we to find the light and for we to live in the light and walk in the beautiful light of God we must obey the word of God the Bible said in Psalms 119 verse 105 that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path psalms 27 said the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear when you have light when you have that salvation in christ you don't have to fear the storm that are that is coming when you have salvation in christ the light of the world you don't have to fear the things that is coming but you have this hope christ will make a difference you have this hope that there is power and deliverance in the name of the Lord. I leave a few Bible texts with you and I ask you kindly to read these texts so you will understand fully what I'm saying. In terms of hope for eternal life, please read Psalms 105, Psalms 119 verse 105, Psalms 119 verse 133, also please read the book of revelation chapter 21 when the bible said behold i make all things new please read revelation chapter 21 revelation chapter 20 starting at verse 5 ladies and gentlemen the bible never lie the bible said the people that serve god and live for god will live with him forever ladies and gentlemen 
I want to let you know that in the midst of darkness, even though it's so dark, when you see a glimpse of light, there's a tendency to walk towards the light. I, Evangelist F. Baxter, is pointing you to the light, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Jesus Christ, the winner man. Jesus Christ, the greatest one. Ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you, come to Jesus. He's the light of the world. He's the hope of mankind. He never lied. He said, if I go, I will come again. That where I am, there you may be also. He love you. That's why he wanted to come where he live. He's the light. And we should be light bearers. Tell others that there is something great. That there is something greater than what we have down here. That there is something great than what we experience down here. Oh, the joy down here cannot compare to the joy in heaven. Where there will be no more sin. No more debt. No more hating. No more jealousy. No more fighting. No more shooting. No more cancer. No more diabetes. No more arthritis. Oh, Lord. This place, there will be no more sickness. No more sorrow. Oh, Lord. No more black side. No more white side. No more prejudice. Oh, Lord. Everything will be all right at the feet of Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. And he wants you and I to be light bearers. Tell others about Christ. For in the name of Jesus, there is deliverance. And in the name of Jesus, there is salvation. I, Evangelist F. Baxter, encourage you. Come to Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Give your life to him. And he will give you eternal life. St. John's chapter 3, verse 16. St. John's chapter 3, verse 16. Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. As I close, I leave a few texts with you, my brothers and sisters all the world. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 5, St. Matthew chapter 5, brothers and sisters, St. Matthew chapter 5, remember we're talking about we need light. St. Matthew chapter 5 said, reading at verse 14, E are, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but an a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they they may see your good works glorify your father which is in heaven ladies and gentlemen we need the light which is Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we should be light bearers. So the Bible said, let your light so shine. Tell others about the good news of salvation. Tell others that there is something greater than what we see down here. There is eternal life for all who serve and obey the word of God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Jesus is the light of the world and we are light bearers. So let your light so shine. So let your light so shine, my brothers and sisters. Let your light shine in these last days. Jesus is our captain, our leader, the light of the world, and we are light bearers. In the Bible it said, if the salt of the hurt, we are the, we, we are the salt of the hurt. But if the salt of loss is savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot. Ladies and gentlemen, what the Bible was saying that salt is valuable. And if we are the salt, if we are the main feature, we should be a blessing. We are the light bearers. And we should be the testimony. We should be the one testifying about Christ and his goodness and his greatness. Amen. The Bible said as I close, the Bible said in 1st John, 1st John chapter 1, 1st John chapter 1 said, reading at verse 4, these things write we unto you that your joy be full. This then is the message 
which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we have made him a lie, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, we need light because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But ladies and gentlemen, if we come to God who is the true light, the real light, the great light, the ultimate light, if we come to him, confess our sins ladies and gentlemen if he cleanse us from our sins now we become light bearers now we become witnesses now we are his followers and we can testify jesus is the light of the world what a lovely name this name called jesus reaching high and far than the highest star ladies and gentlemen jesus name is sweeter that all the songs they are singing in heaven. What a lovely name. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the light of the world. He came that we might live and have life more abundantly. Tell somebody that in the word of God, there is hope and victory. Jesus is the light. Come to Jesus Christ if it's too late. God bless you and keep you. This is Evangelist Ebaxa saying, we need light and in these last days we're not gonna make it make it without light and jesus christ is willing and able to be your light jesus christ is willing and able to be your leader jesus christ is willing and above all and he's able to be your savior are you willing to be saved do you want to be saved call on this name jesus Call on this name, Jesus, the light of the world, who came to save sinners. The Bible said, I came to seek sinners unto repentance. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus always searched for people that is in the dark. He searched for the woman at the well. He searched for Zacchaeus. He, he went there and he knew he was up in a sycamore tree. Oh Lord, Jesus in the book. Uh, Jesus search I think in the book of Luke 19 Jesus is always looking reminding somebody that Jesus is willing to save are you willing to come to him today are you willing to give your life to him today are you willing to say Lord take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee that's a question for you Oh, Lord, have mercy. Dear God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that is in your word. Thank you for the deliverance that is in your word. Thank you for the chain-breaking power that's in your word. Thank you for the salvation that is found only in your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the friendship we have. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this friendship. Thank you for the hope that you give to mankind. Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless this woman and bless this man. And above all, boys and girls, and above all, when the role is called up yonder, may Evangelist F. Bax and all who love you be in the number when the saints go marching in, go into the place where Jesus, the light of the world, live, that we, when he say, where I am, there we can be also. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for being a light and our Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly share this message with somebody in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you.